In this lesson, you'll be learning how to solve exponential and log equations when they are not in the same base. There's two ways I've seen this approached, and one of the ways is the first way that I'm showing here. You are going to convert the exponential form to log form, which we already know how to do because we learned it in the last video, which means log base 12 of 15 is x. And then the change of base formula, and that, that might be something that you're not familiar with. If we have, I'll state it over here just in case, log base b of a, then the change of base says that we can do log a over log b. And that would give us what it equals. So that's what I have here. I have x is isolated, but then I have this thing that I can't type into my calculator. But what I can type in is log 15 over log 12. That would be your exact answer. And then if you wanted the rounded answer, you would pull up your calculator and you would type in log 15, close the parentheses, divide it by log 12 close the parentheses, and we get about 1.08, I have to go back, I rounded wrong, because it's 897, so we would go 890. Let's try the next one using the same process. This one's a little bit different because there's a two in front. So if we can isolate that 14 to the x, then we can use our properties that we're familiar with. So we're gonna divide both sides by two, and then we can go from there. We could change this 37 over two to 18.5, that would be fine. And then log form says log base 14 of 18.5 is x. x is isolated, so now we can use our change of base, which is log 18.5 divided by log 14. And then you just type it in. And you should get about 1.106, and that's all. Super simple, not too bad. The only new thing really was the change of base. There's another method you can use to solve exponential equations and uh, it's by logging each side. And so we're kind of using this inverse operation to undo some stuff. And basically what's happening when we're undoing is we're using our properties of logs to kind of unpack it, break it apart. So this allows us to use log properties to isolate the variable. Now I will say that you can use either method. They both work great. And hopefully I can show you in these next examples that that's true because we're about to do, the first example was the first example in the notes and I'm gonna show you the other way to do it. You get the same answer. You just choose whichever method you're more comfortable with. So if I log both sides, Then I can use my properties of logs and I can pull that exponent out front. And then the last step would be to divide by log 12. And essentially what we've done here is we have basically derived the change of base formula. So we kind of made up the change of base formula by logging each side. And we end up with the same exact solution that we got in the example on the first page. So it still works out the same. Don't you love that? That you can go two different routes and get the same answer. I love that about math. So I want you to go ahead and try the next one. Make sure that you isolate the exponential component first and then try it with this new method instead. Pause it and come back. Hopefully you got the same thing that you got in the previous example above it. And when you log both sides, 
that brings the exponent out front by the properties of logs and then divide both sides by log 14. Now I will recommend leaving it in log form while you're solving. If you go ahead and put it in decimal form too early, then you're gonna have a lot of rounding error and then your answer is gonna be way off. So I would recommend leaving it in log form until the very last step. And then in the last step, you can do your rounding. It's gonna save you a lot of error. And this last one, this is really cool. If we log both sides, notice that they have different bases. And since they have different bases, we're going to log both sides. So log five to the X plus two equals log 42. I'm gonna use my properties of logs. I'm going to bring the exponent out front. When I bring it out front, I'm going to put it in parentheses because I need to bring the whole thing out front. Then I'm wanting to isolate X, but it's inside this parentheses and it's being multiplied by log five. So if I divide by log five, then that isolates the x plus 2. And then the last step would be to subtract 2 from both sides. And what we end up with, I've run out of room, but what we end up with is x equals log 42 over log 5 minus 2 on the outside. So be careful when you're typing that in. You want to make sure that you tell the calculator that you want to do log 42 divided by log 5 first and then subtract 2. You might even do it in two different steps because you don't want to type it in wrong. If your calculator thinks that the minus 2 is part of the denominator, then you're going to get the wrong answer. So just be very careful with that. Next one. It's down here. Ooh, this is fun. I want you to pause it and try it on your own. See if you can get it and then come back. This one actually ended up really cool. We don't have to log both sides. Now, if you did log both sides after you isolated the exponential term, then you're gonna get the same answer. So don't erase your work, but you don't have to because what happens is when you subtract four and then divide by three, we get nine to the X equals three. Nine can be rewritten with a base of three and then we have the same base. So now we can just look at the exponents. There's a one on the three, three to the first, and solve that way. Look at that, wasn't that so easy? So you should have gotten one half in either case. Super simple. In summary, how can we get a variable out of the exponent position? Basically, we can rewrite in log form and use change of base formula or log both sides, which is my personal favorite. It's how I was taught it. So I always kind of default to that. So we have some different situations going on down here. I love these equations because we get to use everything we've learned We've got all these tools that we get to unpack and use to solve these equations. So if you're unfamiliar with your log properties, it's a really good idea to go back and study those. But basically what we're doing first, before we get into log properties, is to isolate the log term, which means we're going to have to subtract seven. And then this is negative two times log base eight of X. So I'm going to divide by negative two next. And now we have a situation where we can actually convert to exponential form, or we can use the change of base formula, whatever's easiest. I'm gonna to convert to exponential form. That's where you start with the base, raise it to the exponent, and that equals X. And then you just type that in. Isn't that so wonderful? Oh, I love logs. I thought quadratics were my favorite, but I think logs are my favorite. I'm pretty sure they are. Eight raised to the negative three halves is about 0 0.0442. 
I'm going to do approximately because I've rounded. That's it. I will say they may want you to write it in exact. This is a rounded answer. If they want an exact solution, then um, you're going to have to simplify this negative exponent. That's not completely simplified. That means that there is a fraction. The negative exponent means it's a fraction. And then the exponent being a fraction itself indicates a radical. So this is going to be the square root of 8 to the third, which can simplify further. Uh, I'm not going to get into that for this lesson, but that's where that's going in case uh, you have a homework system that's asking for that. Next one, I want you to pause it and try it and then come back and check your answer. If you're solving this on your own, you might have gotten stuck at this point, and I don't want you to be discouraged because you are almost there. Remember that log, when it doesn't have a base specified, that it is a base 10. So this is a 10, which means 10 to the 1 fourth equals x minus 18. And then just add 18 for your final answer. And that's all. And that is about 19.778. There you go. Don't you love it? I love it. I think it's fun. Next one looks sporty. Ooh, we have a minus in there. Now, what do we know when we subtract logs that translates into division? So what's actually happening here is we have x plus 6 over x. So this minus made our logs with the same base consolidate with division. And then on this side, we have log base 9 of 2. Now we have consolidated logs with the same base, which means that we can focus on those pieces there. So we have x plus 6 over x equals 2. You can write this over 1 if you want, because what's going to happen is we can cross multiply. 2 times x equals 1 times x plus 6, and then solve. Subtract x, and we get 6. Now, I will say that when you're solving log equations, it's always a good idea to plug your answer back in to make sure that it works out. Make sure that it's actually equal. Um, sometimes if you get a negative value, that's not in the domain of a log and it's going to be a non-solution. It's going to be a no solution. So just be careful about that. Be cautious of it. Go back and check. Um, we've got 6 plus 6, which is 12, minus 6. That divides to 2, so we're good on this one. Y'all try this one on your own and then come back. What you end up having on this one is addition is going to translate to multiplication. So we have logs with the same base. We can consolidate them with multiplication. Then we have, uh, we don't have a log on the right side. So I can't just set them equal to each other because in order to do that, I have to have logs with the same base. But what I can use is the converting to exponential form. So I can convert this to eight to the first equals eight X squared and then solve for x, divide by 8, take the square root. And this is a situation where we're going to want to check the solutions. I got positive and negative 1, because when you take the square root of both sides, you have to consider both the positive and the negative case. So we need to check both solutions, especially that negative number, just in case. So plug it in. Let's check it and see if it works. This one turns out really nice because inside the log is x squared. And when you square a negative number, it becomes positive. So it takes care of that issue that I was concerned about. And we actually have two solutions here. Fancy, fancy, fancy. All right. What is the inverse of a natural log? Remember that a natural log is base e. So you may not be familiar with this, but the inverse of a natural log is e. 
And it's just a, it's kind of like pi. It's a symbol for a number, basically. And the base of a natural log is E. So if we're trying to undo E, we would take the natural log. Or if we're trying to undo natural log, we would raise, we would do E raised to. So we're still using exponents, but instead of um, 10 and log, we're using E and natural log. In this equation and in the equations when you're doing like modeling of exponential functions, a lot of times there's going to be an E in there. So instead of using logs, we're going to use natural logs, which is that LN. And what you want to do is you want to first isolate the E component. So we're going to divide both sides by 250. And we get 3. Now I'm trying to solve for T, but it's in the exponent. If I could get it out of the exponent, then I could easily solve for it. And to do that, I'm going to natural log both sides. Natural log 3. Then right here, natural log E, those are inverses, so they equal 1. Natural log is base E, so E to the 1 is E, which it's a 1. And what happens is this 0.231t drops down. And then we have an equation that we can solve. I am going to leave natural log three as natural log three because I don't want to have rounding error. Last step is to divide by 0.231. So natural log three over 0.231, that's an exact solution. If it's asking for an exact solution, we're done. If it's asking for a rounded or approximated solution, then we can type that in. Natural log is down at the bottom under log. So natural log 3, close it, divided by 0.231 is about 4.756. That's all it wants. Math isn't scary, it's fun. <laughs> Y'all are like, uh, you're crazy. That's what all my students always tell me. I'm crazy. Okay, last one, I want you to try it. Pause it and try it on your own. I'll give you a hint, you're gonna use natural logs. Hopefully you were able to get to this point. You would have to subtract 16 and then divide by five and that isolates the E component. Then to undo E, we're gonna take the natural log of both sides. And on the left side, natural log E equals one and X drops down. And then that's all we have to type in, natural log of 12 over five. So simple, so clean. That's what I like about math. It always works out so nicely. And if it doesn't, then go find a friend, 0.875. That is solving exponential and logarithmic equations when they have different bases. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know and I'd be happy to help. See you in the next one.